What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the Modern King. Let's get straight into it. Women are furious because of this new law that requires mandatory paternity tests. Ooh. But so many women's groups say this wouldn't be fair. You're acting like you don't trust the mother. They say there's no problem with you taking care of another man's kid. I don't think there's any issue with a man taking care of another man's child. But the real... But we do. That's the thing. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> reason they don't see a problem with tricking you into raising another man's child is because they benefit from it. They could care less how it affects anyone else. A woman found out that her husband got a secret paternity test due to pressure from his family because of their daughter's darker skin color and curly hair. She posted to the Relationship Advice subreddit where she revealed that she's Brazilian American, but her husband is Serbian and very fair. When their daughter started developing her darker skin, his entire family made jokes about him not being the father. Oh. This mom found paternity test results in his phone and questioned him about it. And the dad revealed that his family was accusing her of cheating and pushed for the paternity test. On a daily basis, they were in this man's ear. He claims he got the paternity test to shut his family up. But he did it behind her back, and now she's hurt and angry about it. She feels betrayed by his family, who she thought truly loved and cherished her and her daughter. She's also convinced that her husband doesn't trust her and can't decide whether or not she should let it go. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't trust your spouse, the first person you should be talking to is your spouse. There there is an expectation that your spouse will have your back, which includes stopping baseless attacks from extended family members. If this dad truly had concerns about his daughter's paternity, he should have discussed it with his wife. Getting a secret paternity test? That might cause some problems when it comes to light. What would you do in this situation? I would dye my hair pink. Shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> um, wow, a lot to unpack there. Personally, if you're not cool with the person's family, I don't think that you guys should get married. Like if you can't get along with their family and you can't have like a harmonious relationship with them and their family, like, do you really want to fight that uphill battle? I mean, some people do, some people don't, but like, it was a big deal for me to be really cool with Cass's family and for her family to be, or for her and her family to be cool with my family. Like we're all cool. We're all chill because when you do this, mother-in-laws can be straight up evil. You guys probably know. Let me know in the comments if a mother-in-law has ever done anything really devious. Mother-in-laws can be crazy. They can be evil. They can do some very nasty things because the reason why mother-in-laws do this is because they realize that they are no longer the head, be the head bitch in charge, the HBIC. They realize that another woman has stepped in who is younger, who is more youthful, usually who's a lot prettier, and has demand over their kid, which they do not like. Women are controlling. You guys have seen this. And so then, and I don't know if you've ever seen this, but since I was a child, since I was a kid growing up, everybody always hated the new mom on the block. The mother-in-law always, well, so-and-so does this. She's just so bossy and she does. They always hate her because they realize that they're now lower in rank and that another woman outranks her and has autonomy over what happens with the family. And women cannot stand that. Let me know in the comments. So have you ever seen that? What's a good mother-in-law story that you guys have? I know you probably have one. Considering how big of a problem paternity fraud is, getting a DNA test under any circumstance is reasonable. Yeah, if very. he asked his wife if the kid was his, she would automatically say yes regardless if it was his or not. Bro, always get a paternity test, bro. Which is why he decided to get a DNA test yeah, instead. Always. 30 percent. That's 30 percent of all men who go to actually get paternity tested turn out to not be the father. So out of every Damn. 100, 30 of those- One second, one second, one second. 30%? Damn! That's a pretty high percentage. Will not be the dad. So it does lead Damn. me to wonder why when a baby is born, why don't they just DNA test at that time? Understanding the fact that sometimes the dad's not involved but that seems like it would clear up a whole bunch of issues. Yeah, true. What's your thought? Should they require DNA testing at birth? Yes, I do. Yes. Just knock it out. A good old two-in-one. Poop the baby out, and then let's get a DNA test. <laughs> <laughs> why are we Why are we waiting on this? Why, why do we have to go to the government to make this happen? Like, wh why do we have to go do a separate test? Like, come on, bro. Uh-uh. Don't swipe now. Come back here. 
Hey, ladies, did you know that paternity fraud is now a crime? Yeah, let's talk about House Bill 2689, because they locking y'all up. I'm going to make my money one way or another. Even if that means locking you up, I'll make keep my money off streets. of you being locked keep up. Please keep the game. Is, can somebody get their balloon back? Shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> Some kid's birthday party is absolutely devastated because somebody popped two balloons. Shots fired! Shots <laughs> what fired! in the H-E double hockey sticks is that around your freaking chest? <laughs> oh, yeah. And this hookup culture? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a wrap. Because they're making it so you can no longer get child support off of one-night stands. If that man wasn't in your life, let me tell you. This is beautiful. Not only are this they- is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is great. This is great for a lot of men out there. They're making it mandatory for the man to <clears throat> get a DNA test before he signs a birth, birth certificate. But now they're like, look, you're not going to be able to get any money off of this man if he was not actively, long term, a part of your everyday life. Oh, yeah, it's true, too. And mm-hmm. if I could add on to this bill, you know what? If all these fathers are paying these high amounts in child support, why not give the child to the father? Facts. Yeah, that's coming too. I mm-hmm. mean, what you think? I'm going to be honest enough to admit that a man would probably be more capable of raising a child on his own than a woman. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mike freaking drop. And, and as we've seen, gents, as we've seen, the studies show that data and statistics clarify that Fatherless homes usually raise the most degenerates. 60 to 80% of all degenerates when it comes to drug abuse, violence, degeneracy, all raised by single moms. It's driving me crazy. So with the whole argument that men prefer younger women, okay, if you if a man is dating purely out of something that is superficial, then I suppose you could make the argument that men prefer younger women. I would say that men mm-hmm. who are super- Let me know in the comments why men like younger women, and I'll tell you why. We like them because a younger woman can get on a man's page. She can follow a lead a lot better. She doesn't doesn't have as much trauma. She She doesn't have as many bodies. The more trauma you have, the lower your pair bonding is. So if I'm gonna sit there and say, hmm, an older woman's gonna demand just as much as a younger woman, if not more, because usually with women, with age comes experience and they think with experience comes value, and that's not the case. Experience does not equal value. It does for men, but it does not for women. So you ladies come in, high, higher mileage, you're older, you're, you're harder to deal with, you have lower pair bonding, but you're asking for a higher price? What? Stupid. I'm not doing that. It's a lose-lose. Why wouldn't I just get a younger girl who has less bodies, who can get on my page, who can follow my program, who has higher pair bonding, and probably looks better, and her value, she doesn't have this innately high sense of self therefore her uh, her ego doesn't think she's more valuable than she actually is crazy to think right let me know in the comments what do you guys think superficial and insecure and would not do not the uh, i love dating old men <laughs> she can't even get it out what i love dating old men <laughs> <laughs> The other day I had a couple women who commented on my post when I said that one of the Keith criteria for women, if not the criteria I like this guy. for women, is how much a man makes. They said that's completely untrue. No woman actually cares how much he makes. Well, I give you... See, I make a six-figure income already. Oh, you make six fingers. That's awesome. Well, I guess how much money he makes really doesn't matter because you could live quite comfortably on six figures. So I can choose to say I won't date men that make under 150000 because... Bro, I- how old are you? Talking about a man needs to make 150 k for what? A used Kia? Stupid. What? That's what I make. Well, there goes that whole argument that women don't care how much money a man makes. Why should I entertain a man who makes less than me? Why? Because this isn't the 1950s anymore. It's the 2020s. And expecting a man to be a provider? I thought that went the way of the dodo bird, much like expecting women to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen went out the window 50 years ago also. Or did it? So see, it works exactly as you think. Well, thank you for acknowledging that. It's good to know that I was correct when I said that women's primary thing for a man is how much money he makes Mm -hmm. and how much they can get out of him. I appreciate you verifying that and showing those other ladies who claim that wasn't the case that maybe they need to rethink their position. Except for men are not the ones with the upper hand anymore. (laughs) 
You know, they keep... <laughs> what are you talking about? You, you, you gonna start digging the trenches? You gonna start going to do the wars? Doing military conscription? Honey, stop. You sound so... Stupid. Falling back to that tired old patriarchy argument to justify their shallowness. But it's funny how their mindset is still stuck in the 1950s, isn't it? Tell me I'm wrong. Well, okay. You're wrong. And why are you wrong? Because you see men have only one value in life, to provide you with money. That's the only criteria you have. You even stated so. And I ask you, as someone who meets your criteria, why would I want to be involved with you? If the only value you see in me is how much money I make, why would I or anyone want to be involved with someone who thinks that way? What are you bringing to the table? Another 150000 I don't need it. I can make that on my own. So you're entitled to have whatever criteria you have. The reality is the men that you're seeking aren't going to be seeking you. And mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be mean saying that. But we would see right through that shallowness. And if I may use an analogy to give you a little bit more honest truth, why would I drive a tired old worn out Subaru hatchback when I have enough money to go buy a brand new Ferrari? It's about... <laughs> Subaru hatchback. Man. Hopefully he didn't offend any of you, uh, you Subaru hatchback drivers. Oh, the value. The value that both parties bring to each other. And your value is money. And that's fine. There's actually nothing wrong with that. But I hate to break it to you, that's not what most people value. No. And most especially, it's not what men value. Because we don't care how much money you make. It is completely irrelevant to us. Because yeah. the honest truth is, I'd rather have a 40-year-old beat-up Chevy Chevette that runs reliably and will be there for me than a newer Subaru hatchback that constantly whines when it tries to start and is always reaching into my wallet for more money. Again, I'm not trying to be mean, but that's the reality, and you did ask. What is up with women filming themselves in the gym and then getting mad that men are trying to pay attention to them? Like, what? what is, has a face of makeup on? Like, why is your face and your stomach two different colors? Shots fired! Shots fired! <sighs> yeah, I'm man. The patriarchy at work. It's just further proof that when a woman is in trouble, when she's in danger, she will look for help. And I dare say that she is hoping that there is a man there to help her instead of a bear. I mean, woman. And let's acknowledge how this man in particular, he was happy to help. But then he got out of there quickly. Super respectful. Because ladies, not every man working out in the gym wants you. If you Facts, dude. Wow. Eye opener. The, the whole law thing, the whole paternity thing. Do you guys think, let me know in the comments, do you think that it should be law that when a baby is born, they should just go ahead and do a DNA test to know who the father is? Personally, I think so. It would save a lot of men a whole lot of money. It'd save a, a lot of men a whole lot of time, a lot of effort in trying to figure out and play the mental gymnastics of whose baby is that because personally I, I mean i'm gonna do it if i have a kid i'm gonna do it why not why not do it especially if your baby comes out and you and you're like with someone who's of maybe a, a different nationality or something to you and the baby comes out darker or lighter than what you expect like bro there's been too many memes because it's an actual reality the reason memes and the reason comedy is so funny because a lot of it's rooted in reality the stuff wouldn't be funny if it wasn't actually commonplace in society. That's why this stuff is so funny. That's why stereotypes are absolutely hilarious. Like my white family. Do you think they season food? No. <laughs> they don't season food. <laughs> they don't. My white family can't cook. White Thanksgiving is horrible. I'll be honest. Cass is mixed. Her family's Thanksgiving is way better. Absolutely way better. 100% like bro like we stopped we stopped doing we stopped doing Thanksgiving in my wife family's because it wasn't good but I mean that's, it's just it is what it is but the thing is my family throws down for Christmas so we always go down for Christmas but man this is crazy modern women are going to be mad about this one this house bill what is it house bill 2160 something like that let's go back uh 2689 this house bill is going to make a lot of women very mad it's going to make them real real mad because it's going to hold women accountable and as we know women hate accountability They'd rather do anything than be held accountable. Absolutely anything. <laughs> it's just crazy to me. It's just crazy to me. And these women, there's a lot of women out there that will just milk men for just having a child with them. Do a one night stand, put them on child support, and boom. I did a, I did a video probably a few weeks back where this chick was literally, 
She was going through the math talking about how much money she can make if she had six different baby daddies versus one baby daddy with six kids. This woman calculated it. She goes, oh, I could make around two grand a month with six kids from six different men, but I could only make like four to five hundred bucks a month if I had one man with six kids. Are you serious? But the thing is, in the U.S. right now, we've subsidized single motherhood. Women would rather marry the government than marry and submit to a man. They'd, women would rather submit to the government than submit to a man. Go and do Section 8 housing, go have a bunch of illegitimate kids, have no father figure, create a bunch of degeneracy, and then just get a check from the government every single month. They would much rather do that than submit to a man and have a family. This is why we have such a problem with incarceration rates. That's why so many men are in prison right now for violent drug abuse, you know, violence, drug abuse, all these things like men and in we also have a 75% reincarceration rate. So people get out and they go back. I would know. One of my one of my brothers, so I have three half brothers. I'll get a little personal for a second. I have three half brothers. And uh, they're they're much older than me. I'm talking like 15, 10, 15, 20 years older than me. Anyways, one of them is a complete, he's inst institutionalized completely. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys have any family members that are institutionalized or any family members that are in prison, incarcerated? Let me know in the comments. But he's completely institutionalized. He gets out, he goes back. He gets out, he goes back. He gets out, he goes back. He just got out recently, wouldn't go to his PO, wouldn't go to his probation officer. He got 10 years in prison, dude. 10 years in prison. I have a half brother right now spending 10 years in prison. The man is 40 something years old. He won't get out till he's 50. And what do you think he's going to do when he gets back out? He's going to go right back in. It's sad, but he comes from a single mother. My dad divorced his mom. The mom never got remarried. The mom was a druggie. She was a degenerate. And what did she create? She created degenerate kids. Two out of the three of my brothers are degenerates. My, my oldest, uh, the oldest brother that I have, he actually has his head on straight. But my, the two other ones in between me and my oldest, complete degenerates. Degenerates. Smoking meth, doing Xanax, doing hard drugs. Like These guys never grew up and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make it. I'm going to do something. I'm going to have an impact on other men. This is why, at least in my family, I'm hailed as a success story. Levi, you went out and did all this. You got your degree. Now you're doing the social media and all this stuff. Like people look at me like I'm some freaking prophet, especially with my degenerate side of the family. And I'm like, dude, I'm a regular guy. I'm a regular guy that chose not to go down the path of dege degeneracy. I'm not more important than anybody else. And I've also... I've made a lot of mistakes. I think that's the reason why there was somebody like in today's, or I guess it was yesterday's premiere or maybe the day before was talking about Levi, you have so much wisdom. Like somebody commented that I think the reason I have so much wisdom at my age of 33 is because I've made a lot of mistakes and I've done a lot of things to get in trouble. And when you get in trouble and you have these traumatic experiences, you usually learn things. Some people do, some people don't. My, my degenerate brothers haven't. They just go back to prison and they've never gained any wisdom to say, hey, I'm not going to do that again. But I was making stakes at the ripe old age of 16. You know what I mean? Like getting in trouble with the law, getting pulled over. I, was, I, was, I, I knew the cops. At 16 to 21, I was, I was not the best kid. I wasn't an A student, that's for sure. You know what I mean? But I managed to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to read, I'm going to learn, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to be the first guy with my last name to go get a degree, which I did, and then after that, I went out into the world and tried to figure it out. I got into sales, you know, I, I was a teacher for a bit, I w bounced around from company to company, I tried a couple things, I tried being a musician, like, I experimented heavily and I dove head first, and this is the advice I'd give any young guys or even old guys that are like, Levi, how do I reinvent myself? Like, dude, it's never too late to rebrand. It's never too late. Just set a goal, plan it out, and dive head first and give yourself a certain amount of time to say, hey, I'm going to try this for X amount of time, and if it doesn't work, then I'm going to stop doing it. For me, I really wanted to be a musician. I really did. And I gave it until the age of 30. I said, hey, if you haven't blown up by the age of 30, it's time to pivot. And as soon as I pivoted, I started doing this kind of stuff. I started doing more comedy. I started doing YouTube. And I had way more success, and I thought, maybe this was my calling the entire time. Maybe being on YouTube, being, I guess, an influencer was my calling the entire time. So I doubled down on it and we've had tons of success. Like we just hit 30,000 subscribers. Like I really do appreciate you guys. The love is absolutely real. I didn't think we would get this kind of interaction this early, but I started the channel back in November. We've grown to where we are now and I'm beyond thankful.
beyond thankful. Like you guys are real. I don't have to ask for anything. You guys come in, you're super supportive. You comment on every video. You like every video. Like it, it's, it's almost unbelievable. Like I go over the analytics sometimes with Cass and I'm like, I got 2 million views last month. Like this is insane to me. So from me to you, I really do appreciate you guys. Ladies and gents, I know we have some women that watch, but it's mostly men, but I really do appreciate you guys. Very humble in saying thank you, and I wouldn't be here without you guys. It'd just be me talking to a camera. So I really do appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know we got a little more sentimental, a little more serious on this one, um, but I promise I'll bring the heat tomorrow. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.